How's it going everybody, Michael here. So I quit my old software engineering job about six months ago because I wanted to find a fully remote software engineering job. I absolutely hated commuting at my old job. I was doing it for over two hours a day, every single day for three years. I knew I had to make a change and that is why I'm gonna go over the resume, which is right here, very nice which got me this fully remote software engineering job. So here's my resume. I'm gonna throw it up somewhere on the screen. I made sure to make it one page max and I filled it up as much as I possibly could. So I have six different sections on this resume. The first one is the details section, experience, education, skills, projects, and then accomplishments. I know some people like to put in an objective section, which is totally fine, but I just ran out of space and that was unfortunately the thing that I decided to remove. So starting off, I decided to have like a little bit of color in it. I don't know if this is good or bad, but it's just something I decided to do. So I have my name in blue and then all of the sections, like all of the, the titles, I have them the same color. So it just gives like an, a nice theme to the resume. Starting off with the details section, I have, you know, my name, which is the biggest thing on the page. And then I have the role that I recognize as professionally right under my name. I also put, you know, my phone number, email, and then GitHub link. Putting your GitHub link is really good if you have projects that you want to show off. If you don't have an active GitHub or you don't have any projects that you want to show to recruiters, I would not recommend putting your GitHub link at the top. However, most recruiters probably won't spend the time to actually scour your GitHub. So either way, it, it probably won't make a huge difference. You have to remember that recruiters, when they're screening resumes, they're probably just going to spend one to two minutes on your resume. They're not gonna have time to go through all of the links you have. Section two is the experience, and this is by far the most important section. A big portion of my professional experience is at my old job where I worked there for about three years at a startup. And this startup eventually grew to a mid-sized company. When I first started, I was, I think the sixth or seventh engineer. And then by the time I left, I would say there was around 40 engineers. I pretty much just listed out the responsibilities that I had there over the three years. So some examples are designed, developed, and tested SaaS application components, on both the front end and back end using Node, React, Feathers, all of the different tools that I used. And then another example is wrote and documented REST API endpoints in Go and provided authorization using JWT, utilize Go routines to improve query efficiency, retry database connections upon failure, and perform tasks in parallel. Some things to know that I think are really good when writing your resume experience is bold any technology or tools that you use. So you can see in the first two examples that I read over, I'm doing that. And this is really good because recruiters will tend to just skim over your resume. But even if they're just skimming over it, as long as these keywords are bolded, they can easily spot what they're looking for. Another really useful tip when writing these sentences is try to write them in terms of metrics or even goals that the company directly benefit from. So some examples of that that I have here are ingested large data sets to Postgres and optimize the SQL queries for a performance increase of nearly 50%. So I'm putting different metrics so that whoever's reading the resume can really gauge how much I'm contributing. I also included some non-coding related experience because you know a lot of the day we're actually not coding. So it's good to put what you're doing on your day to day. So some examples of that are investigated logs to analyze slow request response times, led application demos to investors and clients, and then wrote unit and integration tests and performed code reviews to ensure code quality. The other piece of experience that I added was an internship that I did way back in the day. Moving forward, any newer resumes, I'm probably not going to include this, but I did for this one. Same as above, I wrote out what responsibilities I had and bolded any technologies that I used 
And then once again, I tried to write it in terms of metrics. So the metrics for these sentences are allowing for an increase in mobile users and secured a new client for the company. I'm detailing what I did specifically for the company to benefit from the work that I did for them. Moving on the education section. This is pretty self-explanatory. You know, I talked about what kind of degree I got, which was a Bachelor of Science in Computer Science at Cal Poly Pomona. I told what GPA I got and what different achievements that I had. Even if you don't have a degree, you can still put you know, any useful certifications that you have, or if you went to a code boot camp, you could put that in your education section. Next is the skill section. And this section is really important because when you submit your resume through some online platform for the company, it's likely gonna be put into some automated process where it's looking for specific keywords in the job that you applied for. So for example, if you're applying for, I don't know, a, a Python job, for example, you would likely want your skill section to say Python, Flask, Django, you know, Python specific tools that you've used because their automated reader is going to look for those specific keywords. So in the skills that I have here, you know, I, I list out Java, Python, Golang, JavaScript as languages that I am very familiar with. If whatever job I'm applying for is looking for those keywords, they will definitely find it in this section. Also, I decided to break up all of my different skills in subsections. So I have languages, frameworks, databases, methodologies, and then other. I feel like these sections cover a good breadth of different topics that you could put. One thing to note here for this section is only put skills that you are very knowledgeable in or you're confident that you could answer questions about. Don't just list every single technology that you have ever used because anything on your resume is fair game for someone to ask in the interview. So if you list out, you know, like I have uh, MongoDB on here. If you put MongoDB and you've used it literally one time and you don't remember anything about it and you list it on there, they could ask questions about it. And if you say, oh, you know, I don't really know it, that's gonna look bad. So that's just a good thing to keep in mind. The next section is the project section. So technically I could have put more sentences in the experience section and then got rid of the project section entirely, but I was proud of these three projects that I worked on, specifically two Android applications and then one algorithm related project. So I just decided to put it on my resume. The first project is a utility Android application that will automatically silence your phone under specific schedules. That was a pretty fun project to work on and I felt like it was something that employers would want to know about. The second project is a virtual keyboard. The virtual keyboard project was an idea I had because I used to have an old chocolate phone and I always liked typing on the keypad. And I thought that maybe it would be useful for people that want the look of an old phone, but just have it in virtual form. And then finally, the Sokoban puzzle solver is pretty much just an algorithm to solve arbitrary levels of the game Sokoban. So for those of you that don't know what this puzzle game is, you have a player that pushes around different boxes to different spots and you have to move these boxes in you know a, a specific path in order to solve the level i decided not to include a whole lot of detail in this section because the experience section matters a lot more but i did decide to include links to all of the source code for each project so if any recruiter is interested they can go and view it on my github the next section is the accomplishments section. I listed out two quick sentences on accomplishments, you know, things that I am proud of. Uh, the first one was reaching over a thousand subscribers on my YouTube channel, which it's actually way more than that now. So thank you all. And then I also mentioned that I've released several Android applications on the Play Store. Even though this may not be super relevant for the role I'm applying for, I view it as, you know, an accomplishment. I really like having this section because it really differentiates you from other candidates. Overall, the accomplishments section really just gives a personal touch to your resume, which I think is really important. 
If you want me to do a resume review for you, you can check out my Patreon. If you become a tier two member, you will get private Discord access and a resume review. So definitely check that out. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and I will see you all next time.